my sisters and brothers, a blessed and peaceful Advent to you. It is my privilege to be able to join you at this time to give thanks to God and to share a moment with you in relation to the Black Lives Matter movement. But also, I want to start with one of my favorite texts. Growing up as a child, it seems to me that Matthew 25, verses 31 to 45 in particular, provided a sense of real excitement about what Christian life could mean. If one was thirsty or hungry or alone or naked, um, and we took the opportunity to bring some relief, even if one was in prison and visited them or sick and actually did something to help. The word told us that that would be seen as having done it to God. If we supported one another in these social ways, ways that are about the sustenance of humanity, then Jesus says, you have done it to me. Seems to me for a child thinking about Christian life, that was very practical and straightforward way. Um, it clearly had a significant impact on my life and on my Christian ministry. I came to realize that Matthew's eschatological vision was about more than just support, though. I will come back to that in a moment. But this year has been a significant year for me and for thousands, perhaps millions like me, who have been committed for several years to the struggle against racial injustice. We have seen many people died over the years because of their color or ethnic background or their fight to find support and freedom and protection from the Southern Hemisphere to the Northern Hemisphere. We have seen so many examples of that. One outstanding example that we noticed this year was the killing of African-American man, George Floyd. Now, racism existed long before the picture of George Floyd's murder on the streets of Minneapolis. But what happened that we actually saw the video and the moments that led to his death had some impact that we could never have imagined seeing on our TV screens. We saw it because the COVID-19 pandemic had us all locked away in our homes for each other's safety. I believe that we could not have imagined or we could not have walked away having watched that video and still be the same and still think that it was okay to hate black people or brown people because they are black or brown or indeed to hate white people because they are white but we're talking about racism and racial discrimination and it is my hope my brothers and sisters that this year could be the start of the not only the conversation but of the resolve to bring racism to an end. And I believe that the death of Mr. Floyd has helped us to begin to reimagine a world in which we take care of each other. We respect one another. You see, racism had been given its rubber stamp in the transatlantic enslavement of Africans and others too. 
but particularly Africans. And colonialism and uh, the empire building structures that have seen racism manifested itself from generation to generation over 400 years. So it is deeply ingrained and embedded. It is not an overnight job. I've been privileged this year and perhaps two years ago now to begin some work with our circuit, the South Beds uh, Circuit of the Methodist Church, to look at what the issues might be for us and how we might address them. And together with an EDI group, we're beginning to look at how we can address the issues that we have discovered and how we have been touched also by the outcry following the death of Mr. Floyd. I trust and pray that God will give us wisdom, that we as South Beds would also become a Matthew 25 church, even more so to, than what we have already done. But most importantly, that we become a church mirroring and reflecting the love of God. Because we may do all the wonderful things to support each other, to feed each other, to quench each other's thirst, to even visit each other in prison. But the Bible tells us also that we must love God. And if we do love God, we have no choice but to love each other as we love ourselves. And this is critical to the Matthew 25 eschatological call. To love God, we must also love one another as we love ourselves. Otherwise, our giving becomes an end in itself. So, my brothers, in this Advent, I trust that you will find peace. You may have lost loved ones to the coronavirus. You may have been separated from your loved ones and they have passed without you being even able to say bye-bye. You may be suffering yourself because of this troubling situation. But I pray that you will know the peace of God in your heart. And that you will pray for those less fortunate than you. Who will not be able to eat this Christmas. Or have shelter this Christmas. Or indeed have the respect because they are black or brown. And that we will pray for one another. The millions of white, black and brown people who have come together over several years now to fight against racism. May God bless you. May you and your families continue the work to say that in Christ, we are a single humanity and we work to bring about justice which is at the heart of Matthew 25. May the blessing of God be with you this day and always.